Welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Ian Yarwood and I'm a lawyer here in Perth, Western Australia. On this channel, I attempt to shine a light on many of the crimes and suspicious deaths on Koh Tao that are either not covered by the mainstream media or are not covered particularly well. Now today I want to talk about a young Japanese fellow by the name of Hiroshi. He also went by the name of Hiro, H-I-R-O and he died, to the best of my knowledge, in 2002 on Koh Tao, immediately following his participation in what is known as a snorkel test. The few facts I have on him are that he appears to have come from Tokyo. I understand that he was a mechanic, that he was approximately five foot two inches in height, and for those of you who uh, adopt the metric system, that's 157 and a half centimeters approximately. He was in his late 20s or early 30s, that's the estimate I've been given, and um, he died, as I said, in uh, about 2002, to the best of um, my knowledge, the information that's given to me. Now, for those of you who don't know what a snorkel test is on Koh Tao, it is a test or a celebration that often uh, people undertake after they have passed uh, part of a scuba course or when they've finished a scuba course. And uh, I'm about to show you part of a video clip. It doesn't come from the from the dive school where um, Hiroshi uh, had taken his dive master test, but it comes from another uh, dive school called Pura Vida, which ironically means pure life. I mean, I say ironically because Pura Vida diving had been involved in the uh, the death or the deaths of uh, two scuba students. One was Rocia Gomez from Argentina. She died on her very first dive uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, also the captain of a Pura Vida boat ran over a young uh, Norwegian diver who was only eight minutes into her very first dive. He uh, ran over her in very shallow water. So it's there's an irony that Pura Vida actually means pure life, but I can assure you that Pura Vida had nothing to do with the uh, death of Hiroshi. This is just uh, an example for you. So this is not particularly clear, but I will, and they're speaking in Spanish. What happens is that there are snorkels uh, going into a face mask and uh, alcoholic drinks are poured down those into the mouths of students who have just graduated from a course. I'll leave it there. I'll leave that there. But uh, that gives you a little bit of an idea of what a snorkel test is. Now, I understand from having spoken to uh, several people who've witnessed and uh, been involved with snorkel tests that sometimes these end rather badly and that some people become uh, very ill, uh, violently ill and wind up passing out on uh, the beach afterwards. Now, the information I have is that Hiroshi was a non-drinker and he had a very bad reaction to um, some very powerful alcoholic drinks that were poured straight down his snorkel and uh, he had a very bad reaction. He was taken away. His uh, stomach was pumped out at a nursing station, but he passed away. And uh, the next morning, uh, four people uh, carried his body away. But it was um, a very unfortunate death. Uh, it, wasn't, it certainly wasn't murder. There was no intention to kill him. Um, but it was an, an unfortunate death, really caused by some negligence. And, uh, but the worst part is that it was just covered up and people don't know about it. And this is one of the reasons why I'm bringing it to your attention now. I did mention it in very uh, in passing in a video that I published back on the 27th of October 2020. Uh, at that stage I did not even know his name. I only had an approximate idea of uh, the year that he had uh, died. Uh, but. Uh, I will put a link to that video uh, below, and I'll also put a link to that uh, Pura Vida um, snorkel test video below as well for those of you who want to uh, check those out more carefully. Now, um, I've on the uh, 
on the thumbnail to this video I've got uh, yet another picture of uh, Charlene also known as Yosh Yoshi Sazawa and uh, many of you would be aware that I've mentioned her in several videos in the last uh, couple of weeks and uh, she was someone who had uh, come into conflict with a lot of influential people on Kotao um, not just Thai but also foreigners and um, the information I've had from a number of people is that the condition of her body um, suggested that uh, foul play was involved uh, I mean some of the information I'm getting in and I do not know how reliable all of it is because some of it some of the rumors or some of the secondhand information conflicts with other information I'm getting in but uh, some of the information I have received is that she had a stab wound um, other information from a few sources is that there was damage to her fingers and I won't really go into that and also there was information that uh, Kotao police at the time had told some people that birds got to her body now many of you would be aware that in the last week or last eight days there have been a number of press releases issued by a major police major general out of uh, Suratani to the effect that her body was actually found inside her house or her bungalow which all seems quite extraordinary because uh, according to all the information I've received it took several days or up to a week for people to actually locate her body and everyone prior to the police saying anything uh, on Tuesday or the, the 16th of November 2021 prior to press releases coming out then everyone had been saying that her body was found uh, outside uh, the house either uh, hanging from a tree or um, on the ground so the statements from the Royal Thai Police are completely at odds with everything that I had heard um, now another thing I just wanted to bring to your attention was uh, some of the ways that the Royal Thai Police have tried to misconstrue the information I had posted about um, uh, Charlene and Charlene's death and in fact uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, what Tim Newton of the Tiger News uh, said in um, a tweet and also in his um, in his news service uh, and in the tweet it refers to a sad case of a foreigner found dead on Koh Tao 17 years ago has resurfaced on Facebook bringing new attention to the incident in fact the interesting thing is that the Thai police were suggesting that this had simply resurfaced in fact Charlene's death had never surfaced in the first place there was only the most <coughs> brief of references in a an article in the Phuket Gazette in 2005 to her having passed away recently but that was it there appears to have been absolutely no uh, articles in the mainstream media anywhere about her death so to say that it's resurfaced is actually um, quite inaccurate because for something to resurface it needs to have surfaced in the first place and certainly people on Koh Tao knew about it and they kept um, they kept very quiet about it um, with the outside world but it certainly hadn't surfaced in the mainstream media and th this is really one of the reasons why my channel ex exists I'm shining a light on deaths and suspicious incidents suspicious deaths that have occurred uh, on Koh Tao that are either not covered in the mainstream media or are not covered particularly well so let's have a bit of a look at what Tim said I'm sorry about this Here we go. The sad case of a foreigner found dead on Koh Tao 17 years ago has resurfaced on Facebook, bringing new attention to the incident. The post calls to light the suspicious circumstances in the death of a Japanese scuba instructor on Koh Tao in 2004, asking if the ruled suicide was in fact murder. The post was made on a Facebook account called 
Cocktail Death Island that since posted dozens of follow-up posts linking other media coverage around the world. The case is of a woman named Yoshi Sazawa who lived on the island for 12 years and worked as a scuba instructor before her untimely death. The police ruled her death as a suicide based on the circumstantial evidence at the time. The case is one of many where foreigners have come to sometimes suspicious and untimely ends on the island off the coast of Suratani. Thai authorities have hit back by saying the Facebook page is run by a group of foreigners led by an Australian lawyer whose purpose is to stir up controversy and damage Thailand's reputation by speculating conspiracy theories about the cases from the past. Okay, well I'm glad you got to uh, see that in the end, but I'll put a link to that as well below. <clears throat> but that appeared on, on a tweet and it was simply part of a... Um, uh, a YouTube video uh, that was uh, published a few days ago. Now, the interesting thing which uh, Tim uh, Newton got to at the very end, and if you're wondering why his accent uh, sounds so wonderful, it's because it's in fact an Australian accent. Uh, now, <clears throat> all jokes aside, uh, the Royal Thai Police uh, tried to mislead everyone by saying that this uh, particular YouTube account and the Facebook page are run by a group of foreigners. In fact, there's only one person being yours truly, and the Royal Thai Police knew that, but they don't like the facts to get in the way of a good story. And they also really like to, um, it appears that they like to uh, cater to um, sort of a nationalistic feeling within Thailand, uh, trying to make it sound like it's a um, a foreigner versus Thai situation and that there are these terrible foreigners who want to discredit Thailand and bring Thailand into disrepute. In fact, I've got no interest whatsoever in bringing Thailand into disrepute, but I certainly want to shine a light on uh, crime and criminals on Koh Tao. And I've also got a problem with the Royal Thai Police, uh, who very often uh, make completely false and misleading statements. And in fact, uh, the Royal Thai Police have got um, uh, held in very low regard amongst the Thai population. And in fact, uh, quite often when speaking with a Thai person, a foreigner will hear uh, an expression such as Mai Cho Dam which basically means uh, I don't like the police. Uh, the, the police are notorious for their corruption uh, in Thailand. And it's not just foreigners who can fall foul, it's honest ties who also fall foul to the police, but the police often work hand in glove with the criminal elements um, in Thailand, uh, particularly on Koh Tao. And in fact, it's interesting that the press statements were coming out of uh, Surat Thani, which is a major city uh, uh, on the mainland relatively close to Koh Tao, uh, because there's a lieutenant colonel of police there who, uh, whose, name, whose surname is Kokpool, and he happens to be the older brother of Santi Cockpool, who is a uh, former diving instructor who slashed open the neck of a Scottish tourist in the very busy Fishbowl Beach Bar in uh, August of 2020. And so you'll often find that um, heavy duty criminals have actually got relatives who are in the uh, Royal Thai Police. But that's it for this video today. If you thought it was all at all useful, please give it a thumbs uh, a thumbs up, and um, uh, feel free to share it if you're not in Thailand. If you are in Thailand, it's diabolical to share videos like this or share uh, any Facebook post that it's attached attached to, uh, because of the terrible criminal defamation laws. And um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And um, I just uh, wish that you all stay very safe. Bye for now.